let's do a head-to-head -head comparison of the Cobra floating waterproof radio versus the Redivis RT49P. This one costs 134 bucks for two, while as this one is only 70 bucks. Let's see if this is the better deal. It comes with everything you would expect, some instructions, a way to charge it, plug, cable, and belt clips. Now the key thing to look at is what kind of batteries came with this. And what I'm looking for is that the batteries can be pulled out and replaced on the fly without having to recharge. Just like my Cobra, these are NICADs, so you know that they're not as good as lithium, but since you can pull them out if they run down, that's not a big issue. It has the same great seal that my Cobra has and the same way to attach it with two firm screws. The belt clip just snaps on here in the back. And now these are ready to go once they're charged up. One other thing to point out is that the charging clips on these are a lot better than what came with the Cobra. On the Cobra, the charging clips are these two real small wires down here. And you may not be able to see, but they're all rusted up and sometimes I don't get a good connection. With these, I think I'm guaranteed to have a good connection. But one shortfall I see on this that the Cobra does not have is the Cobra has charging LED lights to let you know that the connection is firm. With the Redivis, once you put it in, the little battery indicator lights up here with a little charging motion for a few seconds, and that's the only way you're gonna know that this is properly inserted to be recharged. Now as anglers, the key thing we're interested in is the waterproof quality of both of these radios. They both advertise that they're IP67, and they both advertise that they're gonna float. So I'm gonna put the Redivis through the torture test because I've already done that with the Cobra. But before we get to that, in addition to all the standard features you would expect on a radio, this one has two unique things. It's got a lamp, a little flashlight down here at the bottom that comes on automatically when it's in the water, and you can also turn it on and off. In addition, it's got an SOS capability. You press this button on the side for three seconds, and a little red light starts blinking on and off. Now, I don't really think that this is really gonna be useful because I learned in the Army that red light frequency doesn't really travel that far. I think it'd be better to wave the white light around to try and attract some attention. And in fact, you could actually use that white light at night to meet Coast Guard requirements because all you need at night in a kayak is a flashlight that you can wave at oncoming boat traffic. And finally, before I get into the actual torture test, I need to point out that both have the weather radio capability where you can hit the button and the weather report is going to come on. Let's go ahead and throw this in the water and see if it can survive. Okay, time for the torture test. Does it float? Yes, it does. Now I'm going to leave it here for 30 minutes. I thought about pushing it underwater for 30 minutes, but then I realized that's really kind of bogus because it's going to float. So if it floats for 30 minutes, I think we're good to go. One thing I like about this already is the color. I'll be able to see that a lot easier if it flips overboard out of my kayak than the uh, dark colors on my Cobra. Couldn't see this in the sun, so I wanted to bring it over here. Notice that the light automatically comes on once it hits the water. That's really handy if you're using this at night. Here we go, rolling up on 30 minutes. Notice the light is still going, so it looks like the radio is still working. Let me take it out of the can and give it a shake and see if it connects. You hear that beep? That's on the other radio. Well, I'm impressed so far. It passed the basic tests. 
Now let's get it out in the real world in a kayak, fishing, and see how it works. All the intro tests are done now. We know this thing is waterproof. I really like the fact that that light lights up when it falls overboard. That'd be real handy at night. But now we're in the real world out here. So let's see if I can get the range that I would normally need when I'm fishing with my buddy. He's about a half mile away. I'm gonna check in with him. I've got it on high power channel 17. There's a little a table in the instructions that tell you which channels have high power and which channels don't. Well, let's check in. Dick, I'm all set up over here. Any action over there? Some hits on the croaker rig. I, I think their croaker's hitting it. Well, there you go. Pretty crystal, crystal clear. Got it on volume level eight right now because sometimes there's noise out here. Oh, and I think I might be getting a hit on this rock. And the great thing about having a radio is you can tell your buddies where you're catching the fish and what you're using. Let's see what this one is. I think it's a nice big red drum or red fish as some people call it. There we go, radio assisted catch. We love these new radios. So what do you think about these new radios? I, I think the clarity is better. I like them. I like the color and uh, the volume is a lot louder too. Yeah, they're small, they're light, they're handy, they're good clarity, easy to use. So this gets our thumbs up? Thumbs up, two <laughs> thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll start using these from here on out. Well, so there you have it. Confirmation from my fishing buddy that we believe that these new radios are great. I'll put the link to these down in the description. They passed all the waterproof tests. They passed the range test. Now, of course, it's flat out here, but good combo up to about a half a mile confirmed. I like these things. And we're gonna start using these instead of the Cobra.